Hello everyone, thank you for joining us here. My name is Minim and today we're going to be looking at motion graphs. So we have a few, uh, only two learning objectives and that's to be able to draw and interpret both distance time graphs and velocity time graphs. So if you're ready, let's get right into it. Okay, so let's first have a look at distance time graphs. So you can see my first distance time graph here on the side where I'm just going to call that one. We have uh, S, which is uh, usually the symbol for displacement, but you'll often hear distance and displacement used interchangeably when we're talking about the graphs. Why? Well, because it turns out that they end up re representing the same thing. So we have the symbol S for displacement, which is in meters, right? And on our x-axis, we have the symbol T, which in second, which represents time. Okay, so now uh, when we're looking at distance time graph, the graph itself doesn't mean anything without what it's actually describing. So let's first have our stick person again. Okay, trust your stick person. Now, our stick person is just going along, minding their business at a constant velocity. Okay, they're just walking along at a constant velocity. How can we represent this on our this, uh, distance time graph? Well, we represent that by just a straight line going up. That's because for every one second, they'll move, uh, so let's say T1, they'll move a displacement S1, and then at T2, so, a, uh, so say in double the time, they'll move double the displacement. Well, why is that? That's because we're moving at a constant velocity. Uh, if a constant velocity, so say we took 10 meters per second, in one second, uh, so, sorry, in one second, right, we'll travel 10 meters because it's 10 meters per second. And then in two seconds, we'll travel 20 meters. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of those values for now, but they were just illusionary. So you can see now that uh, the gradient of this line here represents our velocity. So let's write that over here. Actually, no, let's write that over here. So gradient of line equals our velocity. Well, why is that? Well, we know that velocity is equal to displacement over time. So if we look at our uh, line again, to find a gradient of graph, you do change in y, which is displacement over change in x, which is the time. So what we're doing is displacement over time. And so our gradient ends up being velocity. And so we can see our gradient is constant, straight line. And so uh, our person is traveling at a constant velocity. Now, say they get tired and they just want to stand still. Okay, so now they are stationary. What will our graph look like for displacement against time for a stationary person? Well, that just looks like a flat line right there. Now, you can see that uh, our displacement over time t uh, from, let's say, T3 to t4 is not changing all right so that tells us that we're not moving which makes sense because we're stationary now but you can also see that our displacement didn't just fall down to zero even though we're stationary our displacement is still constant because remember we uh, our stick person already traveled some distance before they remained uh stationary so they've still covered that same displacement if they went backwards and went stationary then yes we uh if we were looking at distance, it would uh, sorry. If we were looking at displacement, it would be zero. But now, uh, let's say our stick person after they've rested, they go back and now they travel even faster, right? So they go at a constant velocity again, but the velocity is a higher. Okay, so I'm going to extend my floor and do that, and I'm going to put some speedy lines behind him just to show that now the constant velocity is higher. So what would our gradient look like for a higher constant velocity? Well, that would, that would just look like a steeper line. Because now think about it, we're going faster, so we're going to cover more ground in a short amount of time. And, show, and so our displacement, uh, if we go back to our velocity uh, equation right here, our displacement will be higher for a given time, and so our velocity is higher. But again, it's a straight line showing that it's constant. So now let's label all of our things on the graph as well. So this is a high constant velocity. This is a stationary portion. And the uh, initial upwards is just a constant velocity. Okay, so now here we've described a person uh, moving forward at a constant velocity, standing still, being stationary, and then moving off again at a constant higher velocity. But now, these nice straight lines, they really only exist in your physics exam. In the real world, it's quite hard to move at a constant velocity. So what if we had our stick person 
moving at a changing velocity. Okay, so let's draw the uh, displacement time graph for that. So again, as before, S, displacement in meters, time in seconds. Now, our uh, uh, displacement time graph for a changing velocity is actually full of curves, something like this. Okay, so we can see that at every point here, the velocity of our person is changing. Because remember, the velocity is just the gradient, right? So how steep, uh, how steep is equal to gradient, right? So we can see that our steepness of our lines is changing at every point, hence the curves. And so the velocity of our person is changing at all the time as well. But now, uh, and this is a very, very common type of question. Say a question asks you to work out the velocity of the person at time t. Okay, so I'm just going to call, uh, where's a nice place? Right here. Okay, so I'm going to call this a place time t. This could be 10 seconds, could be 50 seconds, doesn't matter, right? It's just a time. How am I meant to work out the velocity of the person here when the gradient is curved, it's constantly changing? That's quite hard to work out. Or is it? So let's ha uh, go up our time t, right? To where we hit this, uh, the actual graph itself. And then let's go across to our displacement. All right, the, uh, this, isn't, uh, this is just the first part of our actual uh, method itself. So now what we do is we place a point here. Okay, so now what do we do at this point? Well, we, do, uh, we draw something called a tangent. A tangent is a line that touches a curve only at one point. So we can draw our tangent something like this, okay? So you want only one point of your line to actually be touching that point T, where it's T is on the graph. Now what do you do? Well, all you do is you work out the uh, sorry the gradient of this line so let's extend our axis away right so we take it so we can take any point on the graph but you should always aim to make your triangle because that's what we're going to be forming actually let's do it in green because that's the color we haven't used because uh, we want to make our triangle the biggest we can because you can see that's the triangle right there from our tangent so you want to take up as much space as you can because the larger your triangle the lower your percentage error so what you do is you ch take your change in y right so all you do is just read off the displacement value that's, that ends up being right here and the displacement value here which is well zero right so and of course you work out the change in x as well delta x and all you do to work out the velocity is you take the displacement which is the change in y over the change in x which is the time. So uh, actually let's do it over this corner because I've run out of space there. So remember velocity is equal to displacement over time. Displacement is equal to the change in y and the time is equal to the change in x. So all you do is delta y over delta x and that gives you your gradient, which is equal to the velocity. Okay, so now let's start having a look at velocity time graphs. Now what you need to understand is that to understand velocity time graphs, so that's our empty graph on the top, which has a velocity on the y-axis and time on the x-axis, we need to uh, directly compare it to a displacement time graph, which is the uh, graph that we just looked at and it's on the bottom. Okay, so now you can see that I have this uh, sort of blue dashed line, uh, sort of separating the graph into two bits, right? So first bit is the point where the velocity is changing, right? So changing velocity here. And the second point is where the velocity is constant. Now, we can see in our first bit in our displacement time graph, right? We remember that our gradient is the velocity. And because our line is curved, our gradient is constantly changing. Our velocity is constantly changing. And that is represented in our velocity time graph by a straight line upwards. Okay, so this shows you that our velocity at every single time. So T1, T2, T3. That are all, uh, every single time t1 t2 t3 the velocity has increased it has changed okay so let's put that in v1 v2 v3 right so uh whenever you see a curved part of a distance time graph just remember that oh yeah that shows me that velocity is changing so uh, i'm going to draw an uh, upward straight line showing that velocity is changing now if the velocity is changing at the same rate so this is called a uh, constant acceleration constant acceleration, we also get a uh, constant gradient here. Now, why do we get that? 
what does the gradient of a velocity time graph show? So, well, let, let's uh, work that out. So, we know that gradient is equal to del uh, delta y, change in y, over delta x, change in x. So, um, uh, let's substitute our values into delta y and delta. So, our uh, y-axis is a velocity. So, and our x-axis is a uh, time. So, do we have v over t. Now, this is changing. So, we can do v minus u over t1 minus t2. Wait, what sort of equation of motion does this look like? This looks like the acceleration equation. So the gradient on a velocity time graph shows you acceleration. If we have a constant gradient, we're constantly accelerating. Now, let's, let's have a look at the second half of our uh, displacement time graph, right? We now know that the velocity is constant. Our velocity is not changing anymore. So what will our velocity time graph look like? Well, it will just look like a straight line because we're going to have a single value of velocity right here over this entire time uh, that velocity is constant. So these are the two main uh, bits of the velocity time graph, right? But now there is also an extra bit that we get with velocity time that we do not get with a uh, displacement time, the area under the graph. So uh, let's shade it in there. Okay, I'm going to use my galaxy pen right now. Let's do that. Okay, so what does the gradient under the graph actually show? Well, we know that a speed is equal to distance over time okay so and velocity is equal to displacement over time when we look at the gradient uh, underneath the graph what we're really looking at is velocity multiplied by time okay we can see that right so what does this end up uh, giving us well this ends up giving us displacement or if i write it right uh, on the speed equation because i realize the s sort of throws people off right uh, speed times by time is equal to distance. So with the gradient underneath a velocity time graph, great, oops, grad velocity time graph is equal to distance traveled. Okay, so now you understand all the features of a velocity time graph.